Did you know that Wyoming is the second largest wool producing state in the country? Well, neither did I, until associate producer Stephanie Smith went to visit Mountain Meadow Wool. Spinning a new Wyoming business out of an agricultural heritage, Mountain Meadows is raising the bar and the bottom line for some wool producers. Val and Karen at Mountain Meadows have stepped into the wool industry to buy directly from ranchers as they develop a niche market for the premium garment wool that is signature to Wyoming. Wyoming is it's number two in wool production in the United States. And so we're right in the heart of where most of the wool is grown. This is a Rambouillet. This is typical of the mountain states. Wool that's raised in this area is raised in extreme conditions with the high altitude and the climate. And that breed of sheep generally produces a very fine, thick fleece. And so that's what we're trying to create as a market for this beautiful fiber. And it does translate into something really beautiful when it's done. And there's long been a market for Wyoming wool in the European garment industry, but by intercepting the export of this resource and some of the processing jobs that it includes, Mountain Meadows, with their strong rancher relations, is able to retain those revenues in the state while adding new value to the wool trade by offering traceback, a system employed in lamb meat marketing. It's similar to what they do in the food industry where they can trace back, for example, a bag of spinach all the way back to the field that it was grown on. And people that we market to are just avid fiber artists and they really do appreciate a nice quality uh, wool and fiber. They really like knowing the different breeds and where they're from. And PJ Camino was a natural ally in their startup. It was clear from his experience with the Lamb Co-op there was potential in opening new marketing avenues and taking greater ownership in the end product. Seven or eight years ago, uh, we were in a bind where our product that we were putting out was way better than the, the, the money that we were receiving. So we got together and decided that uh, you know we had such a we had a good product and we knew it. So that's where we got after uh, marketing our own product. Now we're uh, with the Mountain States Lamb Co-op. I think we have 40% of the lamb market on the East Coast. Mountain Meadows has addressed the same dilemma in the wool trade, but rather than form a co-op, Val and Karen came up with a different joint venture strategy that kept the ranchers vested in the outcome and sharing in the profits. When we started, we approached um, a couple of growers in the state that we knew were pretty open-minded and, and were able to divert a little bit of their clip to this idea. And then we've picked up a couple more um, since then. They own the fiber further into the process, and so they get 10% of our um, suggested retail price when we, once we sell it. So they get probably about double what they would get normally, um, just selling it through normal channels. And then we also have uh, what we call fee-for-service, and it's our where people want to market their own wool, so they'll bring it to us, and we'll wash it and turn it into either roving or yarn. While fee-for-service and ranchers like Camino are the staple of Mountain Meadows' business plan, Val and Karen are working on many fronts to expand markets and squeeze profit from this resident resource. We have been interested in, in having as little of a waste stream as possible, or at least we see a value in what's in our waste. Dirt, water, and wool grease. And the wool grease can be made into lanolin. It can be further refined. So it's good in industry. We recycle already 50% of our water. And then the sludge is highly compostable. It's got a really nice high p potassium content. Because we are, are adding value in the state, there's a lot of opportunity for growth in textiles.